Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles, and we're back from the Barber Vintage Motorcycle Swap Meet and Show. And I'm about to unload the trailer. I'll let you see what I got. But before I do that, let me share some more highlights from the Barber Vintage Motorcycle Show. The highlights are coming up next. Cadet, McCrayton Manufacturing, Detroit, Michigan, back when they made stuff in Detroit, manual tire changer, hi, thank you, oh, I didn't get over here, an SRX Yamaha, those are cool. A Montessa Coda. A Sax Dalesman. Those are English. But let's check out that motor. Wouldn't that have a Sax motor in it, the Dalesman? No, a Pook. It had a Pook. Yep, it came with it. I didn't know that. Well, I learned something. 175. Cool. When did they make those? 70? Oh, look at this tank and fairing. What's the tank set for with the fairing? Do you know? I know it's for sale. Yeah. It will fit any small single. Ducatis, Yamaha. It, it almost looked. It almost looked Harley-ish, but it's not. It's not. It's brand new. I mean, like you would see on a CR, but that's cool. It's road race Formula Three or something like that. Right. Okay. Neat. Here's a sax. YouTube man. Yeah. We're That's watch, we're watching you in Mid Ohio uh, that. Yeah, thank you. That's very clean with all the speedo and light kits and everything still on it. Yeah. Two, two Dalesmans within ten feet of each other. But now this one has a sax motor in it. Well, that's why I thought sax. Is this a 250 Mako? Yep. Ready to race. Ready to race. That looks like Boltaco pipes. Can't tell the motor. H2. I don't see a price. Widowmaker. 72. I think oh, yeah. that's the first year. Am I right? The first year had these oval and then later they went to round where they exited? There's a difference, isn't there? Yeah. I don't know. That'd be <laughs> Those are actually reproductions. Well, I was wondering because I don't see the numbers carved in them. They're nice. What's that? I said I was wondering because I didn't see the numbers carved in them, but they're yeah. nice. Yeah. They were actually made by the original manufacturer. You know, they just don't have any numbers. Yeah. What does something like that go for? Twenty-two-five. 
and this is the first year yeah so this had the steering damper and there's something different about the oil feed lines in these yes. years they yes. go into the cylinder yes. instead of right. in the carburetor right. and a, a real early 72 model this part here is welded oh the later ones is just you know pressed that's cool thank you i'll post it with the phone number all right man i'll see you on youtube thanks Somebody says I hate Ducatis. I don't hate Ducatis. I just don't know them all. There's so many different ones So I am going to show this without comment It's pretty cool And a uh, power to car. Let's see how many miles a lot of these have a lot of miles 37,000 which actually for one of these is not a lot of miles very sweet and It's the same phone number and it's his personal bike. Look at that, AJS, English. Wow. Leave it the way it is. So this came from Meekum. I wonder if it came from Anamosa. Friday, Jan 26, Note, Las Vegas. TD1B Racer. T3, not a convert. And an SR500. I had a deposit on one of these at a Yamaha dealer in Lewiston, Idaho. Then there was a family emergency and I had to not get it. Get my deposit, that Tennessee title. The only downside about these is they're kickstart only. Here's your compression release. Good looking bike, still like them. Still have the twinge. Uh oh, I see an El Dorado. Not crazy money. I'm liking those floorboards. This and the Ambassador are my favorite Moto Guzzi ever. What's the mileage? I don't know. That is not 93,000 miles. It can't be 93,000 miles. This is so much more bike than the BMW of the same time. Five speed, 850. There's your name. Don't know about the mileage. Well, that, since you did a phenomenal job, yeah, that's okay. probably better than the best yeah. refinished job that I've ever Apilia seen. Apilia RXV 450. These were cool, but they were known to make milkshakes. They had a recall because they would always mix the oil and gas. Mine's really more of a ride. Now a twin cylinder dirt bike is sort of a thing. Free good karma box. If you need it, use it. Dude it up, Goldwing. I'm guessing it's a H1. Well, that's a DT one, but it, I don't remember them. I'm sure they're in that color. I just don't remember them in that color. Here is my favorite DT. 
the DT50 water cooled six speed. Now they get as much for these as they get for the 250s. 2600 bucks. Now, I just got rid of my little Suzuki 50 and now they're all over the place. 800 bucks, B105P, not running. So I guess I did okay getting rid of mine. It's just a twin jet. Look at that. So, what does that make the singles? A uh, solo jet? Here's a IKEA special. Hodaka. Might be a combat wombat if the air, or just a wombat. Now that's a 400. You don't see many of the smaller triples. A TDR. Another rally kit on a Honda. A seventy three and seventy four Z one. Harvey Wright, Huntsville, Alabama. $31,000 and $17,000. I guess being first year makes a big deal. 4200 Oh, well, these have a name. I forget what they're called. They're pretty funky. Let's take a look at this. KH400. I think we're being followed. Three hundred five Yamaha Big Bear Scrambler, next to a Suzuki Samurai, I think. Tessa, pair of them. Whole bunch of 50 cc and 90 cc motors. every great man is a woman rolling her eyes. I might resemble that remark. A Bridgestone. A pair of Pooks and a little Honda. Another pair of Pooks. Vanelli Montgomery Ward's Riverside Scrambler. 
That makes it kind of neat. 125 Benelli Scrambler. Doesn't say the title status. Not a good title. I missed that. What did you say, sir? Has a title. CV 160, Baby Superhawk. See, these are the press in kind. So we spoke yesterday. Nick yes. is here, actually. I, I just saw he was, him. I heard he was over at. Uh, I just, he's at, over there. He's over coming. At, uh, uh, Phil's uh, place. Now, I'm going to try to make a little video. This was a special bike, and I remember when he got it, but I don't remember exactly what it was. There was something special about the motor, too. Okay, the, the motor was made by the Ocelot company. It's an Ocelot motor. That's what it was. I forgot. Yep. Yeah, okay. And, and you sent your motor to Ocelot, and they reworked it to either a 750 or 850, and then sent it back to you. Now, was this a, a privateer? Or a factory. This was a privateer. A privateer. Yeah. And it was raced by Brian Kenny. Brian Kenny. The, and, he, and when you look him up, he was, he, he was called the pioneer of American motocross. Oh, really? So that's what's really, you know. But racers used to race everything. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm thinking Steve Wise. Well, the, the, and on online there's a, a biography of Brian about this long, and this is what it said was in about 61, 62. He went over to Europe and raced for Husqvarna and Mako and came back and said, guys, this is what they're doing in Europe. They're doing motocross. You know, I don't know what we were doing in 61 or 62. And so that's, he, he, he was the pioneer. Uh, so, but he raced motocross until he was 30 and he said his body was, just couldn't take it. So he's, at some point he bought the dealership, Proline, or started the dealership, Proline, and he raced Mako 500 and the GT 750. And I talked to a guy here, and he said he was he sold more Makos than any other uh, dealer in the United States. So now, that's a custom swing arm. Yeah, he built he they, did frame modifications. This is a GT frame, but. He modified the swing arm. He put some uh, changed the, uh, the pitch in the uh, frame up there to stiffen it. And what did do you know what Ocelot did? They ported it to the GT. I'm sorry, the TR750 specification. Hang on. The TR750 specification. The so TR was the race bike for Suzuki. Did they lighten the put lighter pistons and stuff in it? I'm just curious. I don't know. Because I'm sure they did more I than have, boarding. I have, I have the how to do this. They they cut the skirt. They cut the skirt of the piston. Look how that's changed. The, so they the, behind this is the electronic ignition. Uh-huh. It, it's a cro crocker. A cro <laughs> crocker? Can't pronounce it, but it's a has magnetic pickups. The boxes, the three boxes back here. Oh, we saw that yeah. box, and yeah. I was like, "What is this thing?" I remember that. Yeah, because Nick, like, I don't know what this is. Somebody's going to need to help me. Oh yeah, so, I might have a still have a picture of that. I've got, I found the kill switch buttons for it, and what Nick thought was a kill switch is actually a tack uh, readout. Because I talked to, it's called Rusty Rusty Rocket. He he brings in the parts for this electronic ignition still. So. We found this bike as a roller, and Nick wasn't sure he was going to drive down to Miami. I said, use my van, get it, save that history, and here it is. It's yeah. saved, and we have a very enthusiastic gentleman who figured it out. Cool, very cool. We're having fun with it. Hi. You look really familiar. I am on YouTube a lot, so I get that. Oh, you're, you're the guy. I'm one of them. Okay, you were in a little cart or something yesterday. No. Were you putting around here yesterday? I had a little Coleman, but I also was okay. walking around. I started it Saturday for the first time. For the first time? For the yeah. first time. So now, carbs are if this is well behaved, uh -huh. it will start the same way. Like it. Boom. Contact. <laughs> So, 
would you rather have an RG500 or this? I think this, because of the history. See, I told you I was high on Blendall. <laughs> an AJS with a Honda motor. Yeah, I don't know. 180 miles. 180 miles. Somebody wants that. You did? Oh, well, now we know who wants it. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. He just bought that. Here is an AWO Simpson. These were East German copies of the BMW R27 with title, <laughs> eight grand. Next to a, uh, maybe a Benelli Cobra Cafe. This Simpson is nice. I wonder what the BMW version goes for. Seventy three CB three fifty. I don't know how much slightly capped repaint. Two oh five, seven oh six, eighty eight oh six. Seventy three. It even looks like an East German copy of the Hella tail light. And I bet it's a runner because he's got a battery in it. Handmade wooden sidecar. Moto Guzzi Norge. I guess that's a Titan. It's very nice. And I'm not sure what this is. Hang on. Oh, it's MZ. Oh, it's the row of East German motorcycles. There's an AWO up there. Well, I don't know if they're the same company. Are they the no, ones? they're different companies. But yeah. this is that six days enduro one. But their earlier models before World War II wasn't it like world record 500 cc. Well, they cycle? birthed they birthed from DKW, and then the Russians had the factory from the East German side and called them. Look at that. That's kind of a rare thing, yeah. that particular model. Wow. Become the king of MZs. Two 1974 250s and one 69 250. $2,500 and you can be crowned the king. I might have to get his phone number. Why am I so sick? Well, you know, it's a lot better having these than the Jawa. I got two of those. Yeah. Look at this. A Husqvarna sweatshirt. That actually looks old. Made in Turkey. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be that old. It wouldn't be made in Turkey. Uh, triple XL. I'm not there yet. <laughs> do you have something with your Do you have something with your phone number on? I'm walking to the van, and check this out. Very nice, Mark One Mitrella. I like that little cafe racer seat. And it's plated in some state. Nice. 
nice bo is that a Boltaco tack? Yeah, Boltaco uh Boltaco speedometer. Let's see what model motor. M8. <laughs> <laughs> 